Alright everybody, hello and welcome. As always, I am Sean and this is In The Mixer. Welcome back to another episode of our Football's Coming Home Challenge uh, where we're currently managing Bournemouth. It has been an up and down roller coaster ride over the last couple of episodes. Our preseason was fantastic, culminating with a 1-0 win over PSG. And I thought, hey, maybe we have you know the capacity to go out here and do something special. Maybe we can bring football home a little bit quicker than I anticipated and have a successful league season. And then we were crashing down to earth with some heavy defeats early on in the season. So obviously, as you remember, if you've been watching along with the season, started really poorly, but then our home form has thankfully turned around a little bit. Uh, really good results against Newcastle and Liverpool at home. Uh, great results against Tottenham and Southampton in the last episode. And the games we've played off screen, we beat, we lost to Arsenal 2-0 in the League Cup. They're a very good team and currently leading the Premier League. Uh, we lost to Brighton 3-2 away from home. Unfortunately, Lewis Cook got sent off in the 34th minute. We weren't doing too badly up until that point, but it changed the game. I tried to adjust things a little bit to try and manage being a man down. And we did pull a goal back late on, an equaliser, but Tamar Hamed, he wasn't going to be denied on that particular day. He got the hat-trick and the heartbreaker in the 89th minute. So a 3-2 loss there, but an unlucky one. A similar story against Huddersfield. Um, we tweaked our formation a little bit, uh, trying to find that right balance for away games. We can't really go attacking and gung-ho into away matches. We just seem to get torn apart by teams that aren't as good as us and play a less effective brand of football. Um, but I think we find a can kind of found a decent balance in the second half. Ashley Barnes with a late equaliser. He's been so important to us throughout the course of the season. We then returned home, went back to our standard attacking formation. A really great performance here against the league-leading Arsenal. Ashley Barnes with a double, Jermaine Defoe with a goal at the death as Arsenal were chasing more. They did pull a goal back in injury time just to make it interesting. Um, and then also another fantastic result against Everton as well. Uh, similarly, though, we switched off right at the end. Early part of the season, we've been conceding goals in like the first 15 minutes or so, and for whatever reason, in the last couple of games, we have been conceding late on. I'm not sure what the correlation is. Maybe it's something to do with the intensity of our tactic. Maybe it's uh, you know what I'm. Uh, maybe it's to do with the general fitness of the squad, and I'm asking him to do a little bit too much. Who bloody knows? But we currently sit in 10th spot. We are now six wins, one draw, and six losses. So we have brought it back a little bit. Our early season form was pretty poor. Um, for the first five games or so. On 19 points though, but as you can see, it's really, really tight. We're back to an even goal difference. And a decent result today could see us jump up as high as the Europa League spots. We're only three points off uh, fifth place at this stage. But we have two relatively tough away games to follow. We've only had one away game in an episode so far this season. We got absolutely fucking belted. Uh, so, fingers crossed, we've found something that will work a little bit better. We're going to play against Chelsea today. Chelsea have been pretty great throughout the course of the season so far. I think they've overtaken us for the most goals scored in the competition. We only held that for maybe the first 10 games or so. They are now absolutely crushing teams, and there's one player in particular I am absolutely terrified of, which is Eden Hazard. His dribbling in this game is phenomenal. His pace across five yards is absolutely amazing. So fingers crossed, uh, Adam Smith can come in as being our more agile fullback option, I guess is the most polite way to say it. He's got pace, he's got acceleration, his agility is pretty good. Hopefully he can do the job on Hazard because Francis is consistently playing against quick, quick wingers, uh, allowed people in behind him on that left-hand side. So the lineup will be Butland, Daniels, Gibson, Cook, and that change for Smith across the back line. Grealish will continue working his way back into fitness and form on the left wing. Ibe has been one of our star performers on the right. Cook and Sermon in the midfield here. Um, I did bring get Dan Gosling in for a little bit. He's still upset about his playing time, but uh, when I brought him back in, we lost two games. So who knows what's going to happen with him. Barnes will continue up front, and Callum Wilson is finally working his way back into full match fitness. So fingers crossed, this is the team that can get us across the line in this game. Right, looking at team selection here, you can see they're in pretty strong form at the minute. One loss five games ago, but four straight wins since then. That would have included an FA Cup game in there as well. And um, we're fair. So we had two losses, a draw, and now two wins on the bounce, albeit at home. They are very hardworking. They are super aggressive. Antonio Conte is still the manager because we are using the old database. But I think I've said everything I could possibly say about this game. Let's go out there and get stuck in. Try and stick on standard and we'll see how the game's going after about 30 minutes and see if we need to make an adjustment. If we're doing well, might shift to attacking. Um, put the impetus back on them to start coming after us a bit more and hopefully we can create some space with that. It's the first time also we've played really the 3-4-3 formation, so uh, it might be an interesting time. I know there's a ton of different people who have integrated fullbacks into their systems in FM18. I haven't really tried it yet, but only because I haven't had the players available. 
Um, nobody expects us to get a result out there and let's just go out and enjoy playing without any pressure and let's calmly tell our defense I have faith in them. And they listen keenly. Um, uh, morale has stayed relatively high even with our kind of mixed results so far this year. And that's all I want to do is try and keep it as high as possible for as long as I can. They are zipping the ball around early doors here, but thankfully we get out of the first highlight without conceding. For those of you that watched previous episodes, you know that's not always the case. Sometimes we do stumble out of the blocks rather than sprint. And if we can make it outside the first 15 minutes, I will be fairly thrilled because that is our cursed time. We've conceded something like nine, nine of the 17 goals we've conceded in the league We're in the first 15 minutes of games and it just kills us. Here we go, Grealish with the ball across now to Ibe. Oh, Zappacosta's won it back, but it looks like Grealish might win it again. He gets a ball in, Sermon at the top of the box. It's a long strike, and I'm not sure if it was saved. No, it's just gone wide. So decent effort, a half chance, our first shot, albeit one off target. Yellow card there for Gary Cahill, early doors. That's one to keep an eye on. They will probably sub him at some point. Smith with a throw in here. He was brought into the team for this game. Can we get a decent performance out of him? Cook now, finds Jordan. Back to Cook. Cook again. Needs to release the ball. Fabregas has won it, and Murata is away. They've got runners in the middle. Oh, we've got to be careful committing here. Let's cut it back to Babioko, and somehow, I don't know how, somehow the ball stayed out. I think it was Pedro hit the near post and then hit the far post again, and then we managed to hook it away, but Jesus, we've gotten away with one there. Here's Pedro with the strike on the follow-up, and Butland holds well. I keep saying Jordan Ives been our star performer, but I feel like I'm really underrating Jack Butler's performances throughout the course of the season. Gibson with the ball now. Cook's made a decent overlapping run. He's really thriving in this box-to-box -box role. It's a backstep ball to nobody in particular. And here's the danger when Hazard picks up the ball. Murata comes forward. It's Cook with a decent tackle. Smith with a crossfield ball to Wilson. The highlight continues. Finds Barnes. Barnes with a strike. Grealish is on for the rebound. Gets it back across. Jordan Ives with the strike, and Courtois comes out and holds well. How the hell did that Pedro one not go in? That's definitely going to stick with me for a little bit. Maybe I should turn it into a GIF or something. Increase my social media presence. Some exciting news. Our FM19 came out throughout the course of the week. It's going to be released on Switch. I don't have a Switch. Um, I'm likely not to play it. Callum Wilson scored. Maybe I should just ignore the games. Maybe I should just talk about what's going on the Sports Interactive Twitter. Do you like that, Sports Interactive? Is that what you want me to promote your stuff? Will you reward me with goals? It's a decent ball here. It's just a straight ball over the top from Barnes, but it's good to see some combination play between he and Wilson. And that's a decent finish for a man working his way back from an ACL to get beyond three defenders and beat the onrushing keeper. And I'll take that. I'll take that every day of the week. 22, oh sorry, 23rd minute. We are a goal to the good. I'm just going to stick on the standard mentality. It seems to be doing the trick so far. Not entirely sure what mentality Chelsea would have for their 3-4-3 setup because they were set up kind of to counter. And their key moments were those transitions between losing the ball and winning it back. But it, that's kind of hard to replicate. Similar as what I was saying last game, the gig and press is really difficult to replicate in this system, that high press. Um, and also like your two different defensive shapes. So a shape narrow with the ball and expansive once you've won it in recovery, it's kind of tough unless you're sitting there and fluctuating between two tactics each time you're in and out of possession, which I can't imagine anybody has the commitment level to do. I certainly don't. But this is a phenomenal first half performance. They are shading pretty much every stat, but not the one that matters, which is goals. Assertively, don't get complacent out there. And everyone's responded really well. So that's great. I'm slowly starting to get them on board with my team talks, getting less and less negative ones. And I know that's foreboding as all hell, and I shouldn't have said it because now I'm going to say something stupid in one of the future games, and they're all going to get upset with me, and they're all going to want transfers. You can already see it coming. Why do I jinx myself like this? All right, so we got out of that first highlight. We did hold possession there for a little bit, which is good. You can see the wind take us up to seventh spot, but they've got the ball now. Fagabregas comes forward, finds Alonso on the overlap. It's a ball cut back across, and Murata with the strike. Thankfully, it wasn't on target. I don't think Butland would have got across in time. 50 minutes gone. Now we'll give it another 10 before we start looking at some changes here. It looks like Cork is, uh, sorry, Cook is struggling in the middle there. Um, Jordan Ives picked up a yellow card which we'll have to be aware of Smith now with the throw in who's done a decent job on Hazard why do I keep jinxing things why do I have to talk just keep my mouth shut silent a silent FM player that's all the world needs oh I thought Wilson was going to sneak in there high press working nicely here Barnes is working incredibly hard to close down their three centre backs it's usually a 2v2 up there with Wilson and Barnes but with that extra one it just makes it a little bit trickier but we should have a man advantage out wide you'd hope 
or at least one to one in midfield, which is slightly different to what we're usually like. Willie Arm with the ball now. It's a good overlapping run. Hazard back stick. I had to talk about it. I had to talk about how good a job Smith was doing, didn't I? He got caught the wrong side of the man there. And I'm not sure if it's because he slid across to Mark Alonso at the back here. But we'll watch Smith. Where does he go? It's a good overlapping run. He just lets Hazard get goal side of him. And then when he drops his run, he comes back in the middle towards Murata. So disappointing, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Now, here's the million dollar question. With 30 minutes gone, we'll make a couple of subs here. I'm going to bring on Dan Gosling because he won't shut up about wanting to play. Jack Grealish hasn't had the greatest game of his career, but Mark Pugh has been in pretty decent form when he's come off the bench, so no complaints on his part. I might hold on to the last one just to see what happens with Jordan Ives' yellow card and, of course, Daniels as the left back struggling a little bit. But I think we go for it. I think we go to attacking. And let's just give these guys a team talk telling assertively, I have faith in you, get out there and make a difference. Barnes is through here and he's hit the bar. I didn't quite realise when I started making that sub that there was a highlight going on in the background and that Ashley Barnes nearly put us back ahead. So anyway, we're going to go attacking. Uh, Pedro's gone off winning an injury. Willian's come on. It's a hell of a sub to bring on. They've made their other two now. Giroud up top for Murata and Barkley in midfield for Babi Yoko. Will that extra... Will those extra legs be the difference for them or can we work something here? They're in possession towards halfway. Barkley has just come on. I think he's actually loan listed at the minute, Ross Barkley as well. And Giroud, fresh off the bench. It's a good ball in from Zappa Costa who has been dangerous in a few of the highlights here in the second half. Maybe I shouldn't have made that change. I feel like you go to defensive, you're going to concede. You go to attacking, you're going to concede. Let's make one more. Let's bring on Simon Francis for Steve Cook and see if that can be the difference maker for us. Francis actually hasn't done poorly at any point throughout this season. Is this a highlight? Oh, no, it's not. It's Courtois coming out claiming the ball. So I don't think that was anything in particular. All right, last one now. 20 minutes remaining. Steve Cook will come on. Only Jordan and I want a yellow. Daniels hasn't had a great game, but I don't trust Tyrone Mings. That's just the honest opinion. I think he's probably a championship level player. And maybe we look at improving that left hand side or that left fullback option in the January transfer window if we can work out any of the players that we're trying to get rid of. 10 minutes remaining now. It's, oh, Chelsea with a highlight here again. It's a ball in from a corner. Zappa Costa's on it again. He's been tackled. The ball's out to Fabregas, who looks for Hazard on top of the box. Skips past one, past two, and thankfully his drive from 18 yards is wide. He's so good. He's so good. Um, Eden Hazard, if you can pick him up in this game, he is absolutely phenomenal. Just set him to a, like an inside forward attack, a winger attack. You know, like any, Even I think he can play as a number 10, as like a false nine or a Trek Latista. He's just phenomenal in this game. All right, 91st minute now. We are in extra time. Chelsea with the ball forward now. They're looking for the overlap in this wide area. And they've nearly found it. Looks like Francis will get there first. He's gone all the way back to Butland. He finds Daniels. He looks for Gosling. Do we have a little bit more in the tank here? There's an overlapping run from Pugh, but it's Apacosta who has been very impressive in this game, it has to be said. He cuts that one out well. Balls with Fabregas. He looks forward to Giroud. Now, here's the danger. Hazard's gotten in behind again. He cuts the ball back for Willian. It's hit the post, and Daniels hooks it away. I can't really complain, because let's be honest, that Pedro one in the first half should have been a goal. If he had, a, had any sort of shooting boot on, he would have just passed it in the back of the net. We may have another opportunity here. Sam with the ball in halfway finds Jordan. Back to Sermon again. Deflected through. Pew goes up for the header. It's now with Giroud. Gibson wins it back high. We've got men on. Can we find them? Pew with the ball now. He just needs to find Ibe on the overlap. Cut it back. Find the finish. Oh, my God. Dan Gosling. I thought that was it. I thought that was the equaliser. I feel like Lewis Cook would have poked it home. All he had to do was just pass it in a straight line forward, and he's managed to hit the keeper. We've got a late free kick here. Can we send everybody forward for it? Still not got any free kick routines set up. I with the strike, but it's hit Gosling, and I'm pretty sure he's offside in that position. And the whistle's gone from full time. I can't complain. We had our chances. 17 shots to Chelsea, 12 to us, 4 on target for them, 5 for us. 11 to 20 on the foul count, 2 yellow cards apiece, 57% possession to 43. You kind of expect that one playing away from home. Zappa Costa, who we highlighted throughout the course of the game, played really well, got his 2 assists. He did a lot of good defensive movements and interceptions and things like that as well. I guess if we focus on the positives, we, I guess if we focus on the positives, we injured Pedro. I don't know. Is that a good thing? 
Murata had a quiet game. Bobby Yoko had a okay game. But it's just that quality they brought on. Drew obviously getting the winner. Willie Arn's an incredible player. Barkley offered a little bit more in midfield. And that's enough to see us throw away our first time lead, our first half lead. I'm just going to calmly say, we are underdogs out there and you gave it your best. Good effort. Because I'm not... Oh, okay. No one cares. So maybe I should have just not said anything. But... Not the ideal result, but certainly a result we can work with. A 2-1 defeat away to the second team in the league isn't the worst ever. We haven't actually been belted in a while, but I also can't remember the last time we kept a clean sheet. So you see here, Bournemouth in disappointing collapse. It wasn't that bad. Um, we were a goal up at half time, but that's, it is what it is. I'm not going to get too upset. That one puts us down to 11th in the Premier League, which isn't horrible. Swansea are currently sitting in the relegation spots. They are dead last. So let's go out and attack them in this next game. All right, so we've come back a little bit early. Reason being, we got some really good news. We have had the board increase the transfer budget to 12.75 million. So I'm not going to do anything immediately with it, but at least that puts us in a decent stead to bring some players in in the transfer window. We also have £200,000 uh, available. We've got Begovic, Borak, O'Flaherty, Haata and Heinemann all leaving on free transfers as soon as January begins. Obviously a bit disappointing, particularly with uh, Begovic and Arta that they're going on free transfers, but I need to get their wage budgets off the bill. You can see how much money that actually brings in for us. And there's a whole bunch of different players that we'll look at at the end of this season that are off contract that we can potentially look to bring on on free transfers for decent money if we can do it. Okay, so the only change we're going to make is I'm going to give Stanislas an opportunity on the left wing. Um, his brief appearances, he hasn't been too bad, uh, averaging a 7.12 rating, uh, which is just a little bit ahead of Jack Grealish at the time or at the moment. Uh, then the other change we're going to make is to bring Francis back in on the right-hand side. I don't think Smith played poorly. I think athletically he's the better option. But if we're going attacking, uh, Francis has the better technique. So he does a little bit more with the ball uh, and in terms of recovering it high up the pitch. So... As long as they don't have a lightning fast left winger, which I don't think they do. I think they're playing a flat 4-4-2. We should be all right at the back and try and build that stability. Only difficulty with me rotating this left-sided winger all the time between Grealish and Stanislas and Pew as well is that they're having a difficult time building up relationships with Charlie Daniels. So that's probably one of the areas that we're lacking. But fingers crossed, one of them can kind of start streaking ahead of the rest and start getting solid ratings and assists and that sort of thing. And it makes it a lot easier for our selection. Um, let's just say, assertively, go out there and enjoy yourselves today. No one's responded particularly poorly. Um, I might just tell the attack this time around. I have faith. Get out there. Make the difference. They don't care, which is fine. A lot of speculation that Pellegrino is going to get sacked at Southampton. Um, yeah, whatever. That's fine. I don't know anything to him. They're our fierce rivals. I know he likes me or something like that or says that we're friends. But uh, I don't pick up the phone when he calls. All right, we've gotten out of the first highlight without conceding. Always a marker of success for this challenge. Sermon plays a ball across here to Cook. Cook moves it forward to Wilson. Good one-touch football there to Ibe. Francis now on the overlap. Finds Ibe, hangs the ball back stick, and Stanislas has hit the bar. The ball's still in there. I think it was Cook. It was either like a bullet header or he got hold of a volley, but Fabianski held incredibly well. Was that Stanislas's opportunity? Would Grealish have finished that one? Would Pugh have finished that one? I did get asked a question during the week about Dan Gosling's miss in the Chelsea game, and I just I was nice to him about it. I wasn't a dick. I'm just trying to keep morale as high as possible. Morale manager, as they call this game. I've now to Barnes. Barnes looking for Wilson. Can he find the finish? He's hit the post again. So we've hit the woodwork twice in the opening 10 minutes. Surely AU is offside. Yes, he is. Thankfully, it's brought back. I was panicking there for a second. Be nothing worse than hitting the post at one end and the ball going up the other end and scoring. But decent start. Two highlights to start the game. We are on attacking uh, instructions. So fingers crossed we kind of take it to Swansea a little bit. They are playing a similar structure to us in that 4-4-2. So hopefully we should be able to match them man for man across the pitch and get some decent results. Gibson with a clearance there. It's only as far as key. We've won the ball high at the pitch. Wilson now on the left-hand side, streaming forward. He's got men coming to join him. Finds Barnes. There's one more on if we can switch the ball out. Sermon finds Barnes again. He's tackled. The ball's released out here to Jordan Ayew, who's one of the main concerns for Swansea. Bonnie as well. Decent strike, but thankfully it's high and wide to the left. Strange one, Wilfred Bonnie. I'm not sure what happened to him once he went to City. He must just be one of those players that needs to uh, be playing every single week to get into some sort of form. Those real momentum players. 
I actually don't know if he hung around at City either, if he's still, uh, sorry, if he hung around at Swansea either, if he's still there while they're back in the championship. Alfie Mawson's a good player. We did look at him throughout the course of preseason as being someone we could get in. But uh, ultimately, I don't think for the money that we, he would have cost us, that he was much better. Here we go. Wilson with the goal. Ashley Barnes has been absolutely phenomenal in terms of like doing a defensive press from the front. He is the defensive forward, wins us back so much ball high up the pitch. Look, he loses it a little bit here, but he's one out against three. He immediately goes back in on Olsen. Then he goes back in on Britain again, squares it up to Wilson, and that is as simple a tap in as you are ever likely to see. So I think Barnes will be getting close to, at the moment, being our leading scorer, our highest average rating, and our assist leader if he keeps providing opportunities to Callum Wilson like that. But we go a goal to the good, which is absolutely fantastic. Even though we had a disappointing result, slightly, against Chelsea, I'd love to get a win just to keep our momentum going and to keep our run of good results in these videos. We started very poorly, but we've been excellent since then any time we've recorded games. So I'd like to keep that, that streak alive. Right, getting into the last couple of minutes of the first half here. Uh, only real concern is Steve Cook has picked up a yellow card. Stanislas hasn't done too much, but I'm willing to give him both another 15 minutes in the second half, I think. The performance has been good. Uh, Swansea have only had a couple of half chances on counters and things like that. You can see from the stat line, we're not doing too badly. Uh, calm, I'm happy with your performance. No need to complicate it any further than that. I want to just calmly tell the defence, you weren't that bad, but you can improve. Just in terms of where they're holding their line and things like that, we've got to be wary of both Boney and AU. They're very top-heavy, Swansea. They've got their best players up front and everyone else is a bit meh. I thought it was interesting, actually. When we went through our squad selection, I didn't call it out during that video, but when we went through the list and made sorry, made that Excel sheet of every team and the amount of English players they had, Swansea and... Who was the other one? Swansea and Stoke uh, were the two teams with the fewest English players, albeit Swansea are Welsh, so they do... Uh, sorry, a Welsh team. They do have a lot of Welsh players in their squad. And they were two of the three teams relegated last year. So I wonder if there's correlation to that. If you have a bunch of English players, they do enough or they want it enough or they succeed enough in English football to keep you in the division. I'm not sure if that is the case or if it was just a coincidence in that respect because West Brom was shit last year and they have a bunch of English people. Though they did beat us in this game. So what do I know? Jordan Ayew comes forward now. And thankfully, his drive from distance doesn't do too much. We are just about at an hour gone. So let's try and make some changes here. Doesn't look like Stanislas has done too much. I'm going to give Mark Pugh some time just to manage him. We're getting to that December period where so many players are going to be struggling for form and fitness. I'm also going to bring on Adam Smith at right back and bring Francis into the, mid, into the middle there. Not for any other reason than uh, that yellow card. That's all I'm concerned about. I just don't need players serving bans or unnecessary bans. And we'll hold on for the last sub for the last 15 or 10 minutes or so. And then I might look at bringing Jermaine Defoe on just to keep him in sharp fitness as we get towards the Christmas period, which gets very hectic if we continue to progress through the FA Cup. Or the, uh, no, are we out of the League Cup? We're out of the League Cup. If we continue to progress in the FA Cup, we will have a lot of games in December. Oh, God, a year's gotten in behind again. This is the third or fourth time, and thankfully... Butler made a decent save. It fell to a U again, and he screwed that one, I think, on his wrong foot. Uh, high and wide. It's Gibson now. Long ball forward to Wilson. I don't mind it if it works. He's got Barnes in the middle. Can he return the favour from earlier? Oh, it's just over his head, but Barnes still has possession. Finds Jordan. Cuts it back to Cook, and Cook puts it wide. All he had to do was get that on target, and it would have been a goal. Andre has come off for Swansea, and they have brought on Wayne Routledge, one of the older boys, getting back amongst it from their lower league sides. It was a shame actually to see Swansea get relegated or to see the way that they dwindled so quickly after doing so much so well for quite a long time in the Premier League. Bonnie now is released Narsing, nice who is lightning fast. He's found a U and a U has wasted about 15 chances to bring Swansea back into this game. I might tactically just return to a standard structure. Not going to go defensive, which is actually counter-attacking now, but um, I will return to standard, try and retain the ball a little bit more. Some of these chances that they're getting are concerning, and I really want to hold on to this win. I just like the balance that comes with 7-1-7 as our record. So a win here will be incredibly important. We are edging towards the halfway point of the season, getting towards that 19th game. 
75 minutes gone now. We might look at using our last sub. Let's have a look at how everybody is doing. Back line, probably doesn't need to change that much. It's either going to be Wilson up top for Bar uh, Wilson for Defoe or Gosling on for Lewis Cook. You know what? I'm going to go with Defoe. He has been relatively patient, and even though he's still set to key player status, he's been pretty calm about the role that he's had off the bench, and he looks pretty happy with that response. So doing the club things, old Jermaine, as he gets into his 35th year. 35th year of being alive, not his career. I'm sure his career is not far off that, though. All right, ball's out wide now. It's come to key. He puts a decent ball in. Oh, Daniels puts Butland under a ton of pressure, but thankfully he scrapes it away. Daniels, again, puts Butland under a ton of pressure. Defoe now, does he have the opportunity to make some sort of impact? Daniels flicks it forward to Pew. He's kept the ball in very well. Whole ball's got to be over the line. Here goes Defoe now down the line. He's a bit old to be chasing down ones like that. Fabianski's dicking around with it. And Defoe, why did I ever doubt him? Why did I ever doubt him? He tackles Fabianski, who fuck knows what he was trying to do. Maybe a rainbow. And he slides that one home at the first time of asking. You can see here he kind of, that's not the ball he wanted. He'd want it to feet. Fernandez pretty simply goes back to Fabianski and God knows what Fabianski is doing. I think he just forgot that he was a footballer and that there was a football game going on. Probably because it's deathly silent being 1-0 down in the Liberty Stadium, but that's good. That's a decent margin. That's a great, great, great impact from Jermaine Defoe. We really need to have that extra level of you know, wanting to bring quality off the bench. I think we have it in Pew for the wide areas if we're ever struggling given how critical the wingers are to our system. Tammy Abraham, Abraham, Abraham now, he's tackled by Francis, and it looks like that'll be a free kick, so might be some late drama here. Nope, nope, end of the highlight. No, nope, don't worry about it. Jack Butland on track for his first clean sheet in a couple of weeks, and away from home, albeit against the worst side in the comp, but still, you can only play what's put out in front of you. Rangel with the throw now, and surely that brings it to a close, and it does. Thank fuck for that. Quality finishing, the difference at Liberty Stadium, I think that's very, very true. Uh, if Jordan Ayew had finished even half his chances, they would have won that game 3-2. Um, Klopp's been sacked from Liverpool. I mean, it's tempting to go after that job, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, shown little let up in this fantastic season. Yeah, that's cool. We were horrible. We were absolutely horrible in the first half of the season, uh, first weekend of the season. And we shoot right up the league. Just 20 players, that's all I've got. That's all I've got. We're not here for the fucking pre-season transfer window. And Barnes is on form. One assist for him. Phenomenal tackle inside the box to set up Callum Wilson. His work rate is fantastic. He's, of course, upset now, and his morale has gone slightly poor, so I've completely fucking botched that one. Do you remember earlier on in the video when I said my team talks have improved quite a bit? That was it. That was karma coming back to get me because I know you're listening, Sports Interactive. I know you can hear me. Anyway, great result. Uh, I'm not going to complain too much. It pushes us up to 8th spot in the Premier League. Uh, if we have a look here, we are still tracking nicely. Only one spot behind Leicester in 7th place. Only two behind Stoke. You'd think Stoke will eventually start sliding down the table. The only difference is they won the game that we actually drew. They've got a similar goal difference. So we're not doing too badly. We are starting to improve week upon week. And our form at home has been absolutely fantastic. What I'd like to do is come back... Uh, and do a bit of a Christmas special. We'll do the double header, the home game against Man City on the 23rd, and then the Boxing Day match, the traditional Boxing Day match against Burnley. Not forgetting that Burnley beat us 6-1 earlier in the season. We picked up Ashley Barnes for them. There's a whole bunch of revenge I'm looking to get in that particular episode, so I think it'll be a great one. Anyway, as always, I've been Sean. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be kept up to date when new videos go up on the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Or alternatively, you can follow In The Mixer on Twitter. There will be a link in the description below. Slowly but surely, though, football is coming home. We are getting more and more wins closer to either continental qualification or the ability to bring in our next like high-level players as well. So I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I'll see you again in The Mixer.